Today we're going to be doing sound design in DaVinci Resolve and we're going to be using an amazing sound effects library called Soundly. So I have prepared a 3D animation of this swan. I'm not really sure what it is, I just ended up with this after playing around with some stuff in Blender. So this was made using my mechanical creature kit, link in description. You don't need that for this video by the way. Today we're only going to be doing sound design. So in this tutorial we are going to be using DaVinci Resolve. You can download it for free, we're only using the free tools in that software today and we're going to use a sound effects library called Soundly. So if you haven't seen Soundly before it's really cool. Before recording this tutorial I actually reached out to Soundly and I said hey could you make like a promo code for Soundly Pro so that anyone who watched my sound design tutorial can just get a month free or something and they were like yeah we'll give your viewers three months free so yeah, you can use the promo code Polyfjord. It's it's an insanely big library, it's really nice. And what's even cooler is that I told them that we'd be doing sound design on some mechanical creature that I'd be making. And then they said to me, what if we just make a sound effects pack with sounds that will be really nice for mechanical creatures? I'm like, that would be awesome. So now if you search for hashtag Polyfjord, I'm not sure if you even need the hashtag. They have made a really large library of all kinds of mechanical sounds. So this is going to be super valuable for just finding mechanical sound effects just a little bit easier. So yeah, let's open up DaVinci Resolve and let's do some sound design. So I'm just going to do an uh, untitled project and then just right click import media. So I'm just going to take this on my desktop. Let's go to the editing tab and let's just uh, drag this onto the timeline. So the first thing that we're going to do, if this is lagging for you, I recommend that you right click on the footage and you click generate proxy media or optimized media and this will essentially turn your footage into a format that is a little bit easier to work with. Okay, so now what we can do is we can just make some room here. So let's go ahead and fire up Soundly. And now I'm going to show you how incredibly powerful this software is. So to use it, simply click on the sound you wanna use. You can click here and you can click and drag, and then you just pull this into the timeline. So now when you press play, it's in your project file. So our goal is to line up the actions in the animation with sound effects that we see fit. But there are some things that I want you to think about before starting this. First of all, I am using a wireless headset, but I am using a cable. And that is really important because I, if I were to use the Bluetooth on this headset, there would be a significant delay. If you have a headset with a cable, I can recommend using that instead of Bluetooth headsets. Okay, so what I usually like to do is that I like to just look at the animation and see what's happening. And let's actually just watch through this. Okay, so I think that we are gonna need some friction for when this is turning around. This is a metal material on wood and we definitely got some of these gears here. These are working. That wouldn't necessarily make that much noise in real life, but it looks like it could. So that means that we should, I think. Oh, this is really exciting, by the way. I think this first motion at the very start here, it's sort of being activated, right? Like a spring goes off or something. And then we start with the main sort of, we're gonna need some, uh, some wind up sounds, I think. We got more friction when we're turning back. I think when the neck is extending like this, we're gonna have to really get some spring sounds. And then maybe some like squeaky noises here. Like we, we, we want some impact sound of, when the beak of this bird, I guess, is hitting this button. Because this is plastic and metal. So I definitely want to emphasize this impact sound. And then when it hits the bottom. And then this light is like a cool electronic light sound. I think that could be nice. And then we move back. More friction. Yeah, and then another spring sound when this goes up. And then definitely some wooden impact sounds when this these doors are open. We could also do like a metal impact sound since these hinges are collapsing together like this. Dink -a dink. So what I'm doing right now is that I'm just making a mental image of what kind of audio should we be looking for. I really like the motion of this head. I think that this could be some really cool like spring sounds, like some old watch parts or something. So those are most of the sound effects I wanna add for what's happening. But then we're also going to try and explore more like an ambient sound, like where are we? Right, I feel like we are in a, um, maybe like some workshop, like a garage. Let's actually just start with uh, adding some sounds here. First, I wanna go to the media pool, by the way, and right click, add a new bin, and just call this sound effects. We want the sound effects to be in this folder, just so it's a little bit easier to navigate once we have spent a few hours in this scene. So I wanna start out with the gears. So I wanna find gear, like a ticking noise that is going to follow the large gears here. So in Soundly, let's... Uh, Tick. 
I really like this one. Yeah, stopwatch. Perhaps I should search for stopwatch. This is also nice. Okay, so let's do this one. But something weird is going to happen when we import this. So let me show you. When I click this and I drag this in here, what we just did is that we dragged a sound into a stereo timeline. But this sound is mono, it's not stereo. So if I press play now, it's just in one ear. So to make this stereo, you can right click and click to stereo, which is just J. So now when you click and drag it in, you can't really see the difference, but you can hear that it's now in both ears. I actually want the entire thing, so let's just double click and let's import this. I want this to start just when this gear starts moving. You can turn off this snapping if you like. Okay, so to slice this up, I can use select it and press Control B. Then you can move this over. Yeah, this will 100% not work. Yeah, it's too rhythmic and we're having this... There's not a linear animation on the rotation here. Let's search for um, gizmo. Maybe some of these power down sound effects could work. So I want to take one of these, but then I want to reverse them. So you can uh, go to the inspector up here, select the clip and you can go to speed change and you can click this button. That's, that's really weird. <laughs> no, it doesn't work. That's cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Let's take it just after the hydraulics. Yeah, I like it. Maybe that one as well. Okay, we're getting somewhere. This is a good stop. I want this to be at the end. Yeah, maybe it moves here. Yeah, listen to this. I'm just going to try and line this up. This one is really nice. Yep, I like this one as well. You can hold down Alt to duplicate. Something about this sound, you can solo it here if you like. This, that's wrong. It's too heavy. It feels like it's too big in size. And if you want to mute the clip, you can select it and press D. Perhaps this one belongs at the start. No, here. It's like a roller coaster. This is good. I want a separate sound for when it's going forward. I feel like yeah, there might be some other springs inside of this that we can't really see. That's something. I think this is cool. I want it to stop like a little bit more sudden. Yeah, oh nice. We we really want to respect that the robot is stationary. I feel like sound design is always about contrast. So you want to make this something's happening and now something's not. That's or it's not all about that, but sometimes that's a really nice way to just get some um, some more interesting moments. Maybe it's limping a little bit. Yeah. I think we can take two of these and copy them over here. By the way, to select two sounds, you can click this one, hold down control and select this one and just hold down alt and duplicate them. This one is a little bit too loud. No, it's not that one. It's... Yeah, it's this one. You can just click this line here and just lower it. I think I want to duplicate this one as well. Nice. I'm actually going to search for Polyfjord to get the access to this pack they made. Oh. Oh my god, that's perfect. Yes, let's do this one. This will be perfect for the opening here when it starts. Let's solo this. Yeah, perfect. And then it stops again over here. So let's just... Uh... Oh, that's perfect. Let's increase the volume on this significantly. 11. Also, if you're wondering if you're uh, increasing the volume too much, you can pay attention over here. You have this mixer. And if, if this doesn't show up, you can click the mixer up here. So if you're peaking, 
or if the audio gets you don't want the audio to get too loud because then it will be distorted also known as peaking so just make sure that this top button here just doesn't go red because that means you have peaked so many nice bicycle gears here oh that's cool there we go i think this could be used as an end thing maybe not oh my god that's amazing too bad we don't have any hydraulics oh hydraulics are so cool oh i definitely want some squeaks let's uh, take a few this part there's one so let's just take one of these and then up again Yeah, let's uh, keep that and see if it's useful later. What's interesting is that now it starts feeling more like a jigsaw puzzle or like a Sudoku. Like where you sort of, you can get inspired by a lot, lot of different sounds and then you can just place them on the timeline. And it doesn't really have to be chron chronological. Like you can jump over here and add some squeaky noise over here. And then you can go to the beginning again and find some springs and stuff like that. That could be fun. Let's try it, but I want to make it brighter. So uh, let's disable pitch correction, pitch correction, <laughs> pitch correction. That's a difficult word. Let's disable it and let's speed this up. Mm. Too much bass. So let's click on the equalizer and you can enable band one and then you can just remove the bass like this. Do some more. Okay, so this is a bug that happens a lot. Now you can see it, I'm doing changes but nothing happens, right? And that's because there's a bug in Resolve where sometimes it doesn't update if you've used the speed change and disabled pitch correction. So to make the equalizer changes appear, you can just do a subtle change in the speed percentage. And you will hear that it updates. Yeah, I think that's cool. It sort of activates and I think this is a little bit too hard so what you can do is you can zoom in and you can take this little icon here and you can click and drag so it fades in just a little bit and then we can add like another impact let's do this one perhaps that could work by the way I'm holding alt to zoom this way and I'm holding shift to zoom this way yeah this is coming together this needs to stop here earlier. Okay, so now I want to add some friction when it's rotating. So it's rotating here and it's rotating here. Okay, so I think maybe paper could work. So this is super violent. But I think maybe this could maybe work. So let's try this. Let's do the speed change. Let's lower it to like 60%. Yeah, sometimes this is really buggy, by the way, the speed change. So sometimes if it's acting weird, just give it a new speed and it should update. Yeah, this doesn't work. Maybe sandpaper. I want the sound of something like going like a, I'm not sure. Oh, sliding, yeah. I sometimes like to sort by name. You get all the variations of the similar sounds. This could work. Let's try it. Yeah, if we would make it a little bit more subtle. No. Uh, equalizer to the rescue. Let's try paper slide. You know, there's too much, like it's bending too much. Oh, what's this? Slide on table. Slide across wood. <gasps> I feel like this could be it. Yep, let's try it. Could work, definitely. It's moving too much, you know, in uh, in my head. Yeah, and now if it was longer, like this. Oh! Yeah, I feel like there might be some audio that is better. Perhaps. Let's try. It's weird that pitch correction is enabled by default in almost every software I've used. Because pitch correction 
never sounds good. It's all about layering. I feel like this could work. Both of these on top of each other. That's, I want to try it. This little squeak there. No, it sounds too big. I want to just make it really subtle. One of my favorite things is to find a sound that is just, it's just not right there. And then you tweak it for a while and you're like, no, it's, you know, it won't work. But then you just lower it and you just keep it there. And then a few moments later, it just works. Yeah, this is the one. This could definitely work. Let's try this for the other one. Let's just uh, slow it down. This one has too much bass. Yeah, 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 the sliding. Sliding is coming together. It sounds like wind. Not happy about that. Perhaps if we copy this. Yeah, that could work. I want a little bit more bass in the movement of the just going forward. I want to hear these parts of the chain hitting the floor, but I'm not really sure what it would sound like. Wood. Ah, wood rattle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <gasps> Too much squeaking. Maybe wood rhythm. Let's try a uh, quake wood. It's like way too massive. I don't really know what I'm looking for. Let's try and find some springs instead. Let's try clockwork. That's a good... Uh... Maybe this could work. I'm feeling it could be like a spring for this extension here. Yeah, that works. Yeah, it first goes up and then it goes quiet. So you can hold on Alt on this line and then you can just click to make these keyframes so we can pull it down here. So now we sort of tailor this to when there's more motion, there's more sound. Yeah, I feel like this works. And then let's make it a little bit louder. We want one when it's going back as well. Oh, that's good. It has like an ending as well. That's the squeaking is amazing. I'm so glad I added that. Okay, now we need a button click. Click. Maybe button. Ah, let's try it. It probably won't work. It could work. Let's add some squeaking to this. Yeah. I wonder what the difference between a creak and a squeak is. Oh, scrape. So you got scrape, squeak, and creak. This is probably one of the most difficult parts about uh, speaking another language. Because in Norwegian, I know all these words. This is good. Let's take a longer part. I'm just gonna search for tiny metal. Oh, this could be uh, for the button. I think I've used this one before as well. Yeah, I've used this one in the one of, yeah, I can't play the video because it has uh, corporate music in it, but I've 100% used it in this one. If you watch this on Instagram. Okay, so we are getting some sound effects. This needs to uh, go on for a little bit longer. Set it to uh, 73. Yeah, we need just a bunch of uh, metal part. It needs to go crazy here. Maybe this one. And then some sliding again. This one is so long that since we have heard it that there's no problem to just copy it to the end. It's too loud. Yeah, we want just like a super silent version of this. Oops, forgot to make it stereo. So 
So I want to have like a little bit of a gear situation here, just when it moves. Like this little motion here. And there's going to be this back and forth. I think it could make it a little bit more funnier as well. <laughs> yeah, it is funnier. Yeah, this is good. Hmm, maybe we can take another one of these. Yeah, it's too... Um, this is better. Yeah, you heard that? We want this ticking instead. That is a little bit slower. Yeah, so now you can hear it's first slow. Like it's exploring. Then it's pulling back. And then it goes fast again because it's getting excited. And it's not that much of a difference in the motion of the animation. But I think we can use sound design to sort of tell more of a story. These are way too loud. I don't think these will be as um, easy to hear once we add some ambient noise. I think I want to add some fans, just like some room tone. Yeah, oh, that's so much more funnier now that we have this uh, short clicking instead. And then we want to add the fast one here. Okay, so this motion. When did we start previously? There we go. So let's just take some of this. And let's see what we got. Yeah, that's driving sound. So we just want some driving sound here, a little bit more intense. I want to speed this up a little bit since it's going faster. So now, just when it goes back, right here, that's where we want it. Could be too loud. Yeah, it's too many layers. Yeah, that's good. Let's delete this. And then let's do one basic rotation sound. We have this one. Yeah, so here it starts rotating again. These two. Nice. I want uh, some ratcheting. This is really cool opening. Oh, let's add another squeak here. Is this a squeak? Yeah, let's add a squeak to the initial bounce. Now we just need a wooden door. It's just gonna be like a good one as well. <gasps> These are perfect. That's cool. Let's try it. It's too loud. It doesn't really... Yeah, this one. And I want to just do a final squeak. I feel squeaks are uh, squeaks are a little bit funny. Oh, nice. This is going to be really nice. This is the last sound of the animation. Nice. Okay, so I feel like this feels a little bit too naked. And now I got the perfect analogy. We are going to add like a room tone or an ambience sound. If you're a 3D artist, that's the equivalent of an HDRI. You don't really see it directly, but it's just there. And it's it's it helps with the ambient occlusion, ambient sounds. It's a perfect analogy. So if you search for ambience, these type of sounds, it, it is like the HDRI of a 3D animation. Listen to this. This can put you in such a good mood. If you're like, if you're having a bad day, just listen to some ambience. Hmm, let's try office. No, let's not. Uh, room. Yeah, let's try this one. Because the backstory of this animation is that we are in some sort of sh workshop place where some grandfather has made a robot for their grandchildren. And I feel like the grandchildren has painted on this wooden backdrop here. So what we want is we want like um, the audio of some garage somewhere. I feel this could work. Let's just try and do a bunch of this. And let's place this at the bottom here. It's so nice. The room tone is too loud. Let's do minus. Also, I like that the room tone starts before the animation. So let's press Control A to select everything. And let's just move it like uh, two seconds. Two seconds like this. And now let's just move this over. So now you got two seconds of ambience. Too many cars, I think, in the room tone. So let's just find a part with less cars. Let me actually make sure that the ambience is a little bit lower. I want to do minus eight. Minus eight. The squeaking is really making us feel alive. 
Okay, so that is my workflow. Now let's have a look at the final result in full screen. So now you might have noticed that I didn't put any sound in the speakers, but uh, you could. In fact, you could do all this sound design yourself, because we are doing a sound design challenge on the Discord channel, the Polyfjord Viewport community, link in the description. So when this video goes live, we are starting a sound design challenge that goes the entire of March and then a few days into April. And there are going to be some prizes as well, so the winner or three winners actually, will get the mechanical creature kit and they will also get one year of Soundly Pro, which is really amazing for Soundly. So Soundly is not technically sponsoring this video, but they are making this contest just a lot more fun because you can use the promo code Polyfjord to access all the pro sounds when you're working with this uh, challenge. So check out the link in the description to join the challenge of the Discord server and I'm really looking forward to see what you will create. So what I've done is that I've actually re-rendered this. So we got the vertical render if you want to post this to Instagram or TikTok or wherever. I'm licensing this animation as Creative Commons so you can just tag me in the post like animations or visuals by Polyfjord and then sound design by you for example. And I've also rendered it in horizontal as well, if you want to post it to YouTube or something. So I'm really looking forward to see what sound design will come up with. And please try and use different sounds than what I've used. I want you to try and just really find how much story can you add to this animation with the sound design. So uh, yeah, that's the workflow. Check out the mechanical creature kit, link in the description as well. That's my Blender asset pack if you want to try and make some animations like this yourself. And big thanks to Soundly for making promo codes for all of you to use and for setting us up with three years of Soundly Pro to three winners. So that's like, it's one year each. It's not like three years for one version. So uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.